Okay, so I have this problem on the board. We have n choose four equals 35. And I thought this would be an interesting example. So even though it's gonna be pretty quick, we'll write our n choose four as a um, factorial expression. So we're gonna have, this is the same thing as n factorial over n minus four factorial times four factorial equals 35. And actually, we're gonna want the prime factorization, so I'm gonna write this 35 as seven times five. Then for our next step, I'm gonna take this four factorial and let's move it to the right side. So we're gonna have, we'll rewrite this. I'm also gonna expand out this n factorial. So let's look at that. So we'll just write out n factorial by the definition, which is n times n times one, n minus, sorry, n times n minus one, times n minus two, times n minus three. It goes on and on, but we could kind of cap it like this by saying n minus four factorial over n minus four factorial. This four is moved to the other side, so we're gonna rewrite this as seven times five, I'll write this out. Four I'm gonna write as two squared times three times two. And then let's just clean this up and get it to the prime factorization, which is gonna be seven times five times three times two to the third. I don't know what that number is, but it doesn't matter because we have the we're gonna work with the prime factorization. Now on the left side. Cleaning this up, we're gonna cancel n minus four factorial, and those cancel. So we end up with just four consecutive integers. So we have four consecutive integers that we want when multiplied to look like this. So first thing I like to use in this case, so I don't, I don't know what the answer is off the top of my head, but we'll use the seven because in a factorial expression, the, the largest prime factor is kind of a giveaway. We know that there has to be a seven in this expression. We know there has to be a five in this expression. Um, we know n has gotta be greater than or equal to seven for sure, because that's the only way we can get a seven in the expression. So based on this prime factorization, we know that we need a seven and a five we have four consecutive integers. We know we need a seven and a five. So there's two different ways we could write this. We could we could guess that it's gonna be eight times seven times six times five, or it could be seven times six times five times four. Now, there are other combinations that would include um, a seven and five, like for example, we could have 15 times 14 times 13 times 12, right? We have a five in here, we have a seven in here, but the problem is we don't have a 13. So that's how we're using the largest prime to kind of narrow down the options. So this will tend to happen where we, can, we have it where we know we only have two options because if we go higher, we're gonna end up with primes that are not in our factorization. So then with just these two options, we have, um, we're only left to check. And the interesting thing is three of the number, this is in common. So with our two choices, these aren't changing. We have a seven and a five. With a six, we have a two and a three. So we've satisfied, we have our three. So we've satisfied, we have a seven, we have a five, we have a three. The only question now is how many twos are in, and we want, there needs to be three twos. So let's just count up twos. Four is two squared. Eight is two cubed. So that means in this expression, we have four twos, right? Because we have a two here and the six. And then in this expression, we have three twos. So that's gonna match this. So that means our answer must be seven times six times five times four. Uh, but the question, what we need is we actually need N so we want the largest value in this four consecutive integer. So the largest value, we're gonna say n equals 
seven.